Welcome to the Homeschool Show from North Carolinians for Home Education. Our goal is to help you homeschool with confidence and joy. I'm your host, Matthew McDill, and we have as our co-host again, John Lewis. Hey, John. Hello. How are you, bud? Doing great. What about you? Um, I'm living the dream for sure. <laughs> Staying busy. Today, right. we're going to take a look at the homeschool news, and we're going to let you know about a case against a uh, homeschool, uh, some homeschool parents in Texas and tell you about our teen activities at the Thrive Conference as well. We're also going to have the homeschool conversations segment where we'll listen to a part of a conversation that Matthew had with Todd Wilson, who's going to be one of our featured speakers at the Thrive Conference this year. And then we're going to have homeschool helps with Amanda and spring is testing season for for uh, homeschoolers. All you experienced people know that. And Amanda's going to talk about testing today. So, um, Matthew, tell us about the, the homeschool news. Yeah, so uh, looking at an article on HSLDA.org, that's the Homeschool Legal Defense Association. Uh, they're helping uh, some parents in Texas. And uh, the title says, Texas Appeals Court Blocks Order to Search Home and Seize Kids. So let me tell you about the background of this and what's going on. Um, just before Christmas, an eight-year-old boy walked to the dollar store near his home without permission. Uh, his parents grounded him and told him not to do it again. Two weeks later, on January 4th, a DFPS investigator came to the home where the parents explained that the boy had never done this before and he hadn't done it since. When the investigator explained what she needed to do to complete her investigation, the parents declined. They said they felt the matter had been adequately handled and that the investigator's services could be used elsewhere. I'm sure they appreciated that opinion. <laughs> uh, on February 6th, uh, February 16th, six weeks after showing up at the family's home, the investigator wrote in a sworn statement to the district court that the parents would not allow her to speak with the children and did not allow me access to the home environment. She said then, the parents are not cooperating in the investigation, in the investigation and it would benefit the agency to conduct a proper investigation to come to a conclusion on the case. The DFPS attorney waited almost another week until February 21st to file the investigator's sworn statement with the court, then wrote that circumstances were so dire that there was no time for a proper hearing where the parents could tell their side of the story. The court issued the order requested by the DFPS attorney on February 22nd, writing that there is a quote, there is a good case to believe that the child's child is in imminent danger of being subjected to aggravate circumstances. The next day, the court clerk sent the parents a letter notifying them the order had been issued, which they received almost a week later on Tuesday, February 27th. The parents immediately called HSLDA. We filed an emergency appeal on Wednesday and scheduled an emergency hearing in the district court for Thursday to ask the issuing judge to temporarily block the order while the court of appeals considered our appeal. Before the district court hearing, the DFPS attorney agreed not to enforce the order until March 5th. In the meantime, the appellate court asked DFPS to respond to the appeal by noon, March 4th. On March 5th, the appellate court granted our motion to temporarily block the DFPS investigator from enforcing the order while the court considers our appeal. The investigator has until March 19th to respond to the appeal. So uh, that's already passed, but we don't have an update on this yet. So uh, we're going to be watching to see what happens. But um, this is some crazy overreach when, uh, you know, one little thing goes wrong and then they want to, to take your kids away. We're thankful that HSL Day is on this uh, situation and we'll also keep you updated. Wow, that's that's incredible. You know, praise the Lord for HSLDA um, and and the, the wisdom the parents had to call them right away. That was awesome. That's right. Uh, well, next we're going to update you guys on the Thrive Homeschool Conference that's coming up uh, May 23rd through 25th. That's in Winston-Salem at the Benton Convention Center. And we want to give you some information about, first of all, some teen activities are going to, that are going to happen at the conference. We, we've mentioned before our different teen 
track workshops. Uh, those were mentioned last week. We also have the teens and alumni cotillion style dance on Thursday night at 730. Uh, there's also the teen and alumni game social on Friday night from 730 to 9. And the college fair happens on Friday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Now, all of those, my kids have been a part of those the last few years, and all of those are just uh, wonderful events. Mm -hmm. And for some of you out there need to know that your kids can make some really uh, good friends, lasting friendships at those events uh, with, with other homeschool students across the state. It seems to be a, right. uh, a very... Um, very easy thing for them to do. And I think it's awesome. Uh, but they seem to just really connect with each other. Um, you can find out more about the events at nche.com slash thrive slash teen. We also want to go over some frequently asked questions about the conference. Some people have asked, do you have to be registered for the conference to attend the college fair or the chess tournament? or the Fabulous Fossils class? And the answer to that is no. Um, some other questions that we've gotten are, can our children sit in the workshops with us? Absolutely. Uh, your children are welcome to attend the workshops with you. We just ask that you uh, make sure they're not disruptive during that time. If, uh, if they are disruptive, uh, take them out of the room. We took one of our kids when, when she was a baby, and she would screech like a pterodactyl, and we had to get up and uh, leave the room quite frequently. Um, but anyway, it was, it was very humorous. Um, and uh, one lady approached and said, Oh, that's the baby I've been hearing. That's a really great moment. Um, <laughs> that's the baby. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, another question that we've gotten is, are all the talks Christian based? And the answer to that is no. Now, a lot of our talks are going to contain Christian content and most have information that applies to all homeschoolers. Um, and while NCHE uh, is predominantly made up of, of uh, believers who have lots of uh, um, Christian convictions, it is an organization that's open to all homeschoolers across the state, and we service all homeschoolers. Um, today, as we move on to the homeschool conversation segment, Todd Wilson is the founder of Family Man Ministries and the Smiling Homeschooler. His his passion and his mission are to remind dads and moms that of what's most important through weekly emails and podcasts like his uh, program, The Family Man Show, or The Smiling Homeschooler, and through his seminars and his books. Todd just wants to encourage parents. He and his wife, Debbie, homeschooled uh, two of their eight children because six of them have already graduated from homeschool and four of them are married. So they've been through this. They're veterans and they live in northern Indiana and they travel across the United States in the family man mobile. And so if you go to his sessions, you'll likely hear about that. And we're going to take a listen to Matthew's conversation with Todd. Todd, it's great talking to you again. Uh, I'll just mention that we were uh, showed our interview in 2020. Uh, we were talking about the 2021 conference and whether it was going to happen or not, because everything had did been it, canceled. Did so it happen? It did happen. I can't remember. Oh, man, that was just that. I hope we never have to replay any of those times ever, ever again. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> I was just going to ask uh, how things have been going with your ministry. You know, things have been going great. Um, uh, you know, since I started this, this is my 21st year of doing this. Um, and really, people ask me, so what's changed? Really? I, I'm not sure much has. You know, dads still feel pulled to be something. And, um, and knowing that, you know, the best is right in their house. And moms, homeschooling moms, still feel the strong desire to to have their kids home, but they feel the doubts that they're going to ruin their children. And, mm -hmm. you know, so that really hasn't changed much. I know for us, um, family has gotten busier. Um, so, you know, it used to be I'd have my eight children and they'd be all running upstairs homeschooling. And, and I would be thinking of, you know, during the day, you know, where we're going to speak next and how, what we're going to do and products. And, and now I, I just thought they would kind of 
grow up and move away. They're all like real close to me. So we have nine. We just had our ninth grandchild um, on Friday be- oh, before great. we record this. And so, and they all live real close. They live right next door, across the street, and ten minutes That's away fun. is the farthest. And so, family just takes up so much time. And so, we're trying to figure out how how we do ministry and family together. And maybe they're not any different. Maybe family is ministry and hmm. all that. And so, you know, it's amazing to me how quickly this is passing. You know, I, I, and you know this too, because, you know, when we first met, your kids were little. My kids were little. And now they're not. And they have kids of their own. And and you're yeah. like, wow, we're, we're running down. And I'm feeling a little bit of that. Like, this is not because when you're young, you're like when my my son, you know, he's 30 years old. You just yeah. think the whole world you got forever. You know, you don't worry. You don't think. Yeah. Let's see if I how long will these windows last? Because you don't care. Now you're like you're weighing the options. OK, I could live with this or I'm going to be <laughs> dead in a while. So maybe I won't invest in it now. You know, and I'm feeling some of that. And it's kind of a right. weird, weird thing. Absolutely. Well, that's great. I'm. I love to hear your kids are close and that it's part of life and ministry. Uh, that's certainly a vision I think we'd all like to have. Things mm-hmm. always don't work out that way, but that's that's really right, great. Right. Um, we're uh, looking forward to having you again to uh, Thrive Conference, May 23 through 25. Uh, we have a three-year rotation for our speakers, and every three years, Todd Wilson has to come to Thrive. We're so excited. Uh, big favorite. Um, I was just looking at some of your uh, workshops and mm-hmm. wanted to talk through some of those, hopefully just to pique some interest once again, uh, so people could see how um, helpful it is to be live at a conference, um, oh, yeah. to to keep coming because things are always changing and you always have new phases of life. You're learning new things. And because we have amazing content. Um, so just looking at some of these workshops here, uh, raising politically incorrect pink and blue kids in a purple world. I think I've heard you mention this before. Uh, just unpack that idea for me real quick. Well, this whole idea is like, I, I'm, I'm, every time I talk about it, I'm always a little nervous because our world has changed so much. This is not a yeah. workshop that had to be done 20 years ago. You know, yeah. it was very clear, but now everything's so muddied. And the mm-hmm. world has muddied our, has messed up our kids, you know, um, or maybe they haven't messed up our kids. They've messed up a lot of other kids. You know, I, I was at a homeschool conference uh, a couple weeks ago in Saskatchewan and a girl came up to me and she said, uh, we had been talking. She'd heard me talk that day. And she goes, I was one of those kids who wasn't sure I was a girl. You know, mm-hmm. and she goes, I just got caught up in their message. And so, and, and what, as much as that troubles me as kids not knowing, like, and I, this is happening all the time, you know, uh, parents, I, I, I have an email, a guy who's been a family man for a long time. And he said, my, my son now thinks he's a girl, you know, and I don't know what to do. And, uh, but what troubles me is that I feel like some of us parents are starting to buy into it. Now we're not mm-hmm. saying we're not buying into so much that, uh, you know, girls, you know, our girls are turning into boys. We don't believe that. But we're starting to get, I think, to adopt a message that maybe our girls and our boys should be taught and trained the same. You know, girls can be superheroes. They can be whatever they want. And I'm here to say, you know, I think there's a different message for our boys and our girls. Some of the messages are the same, of course. You know, God loves them all the same. God loves us all the same. Doesn't matter. You know, but I think there are different things we teach our boys and different things we teach our girls. And really, it was it was brought to my attention um, by my oldest daughter. And I remember, because I don't want to give away the farm, but she introduced me to this thought of, no, dad, you're asking me to do a blue job when I do only do pink jobs. <laughs> and and we kind of worked through that. And I'll tell you, it is even kind of, it's stuck with my family. Because my daughter, the other day, I said, hey, Maggie, you need to do this. And she goes, that's a blue job. <laughs> and, you know, kind of like saying, no, that's what the yeah. boys do. I don't. And I'm good with that. 
you know, yeah. because That's I want right. my boys to know there are things that are expected of them that God expects of them, that their future wives will expect of them. That will is not expected from my daughters. You know, I don't want my daughters to be so strong that they don't know that they can't be rescued. You mm -hmm. know, that we're we're trying to the message is girls don't need to be rescued anymore. They need to be the rescuers. And that's not the way God designed it. Yes, mm -hmm. he does some amazing things. My wife has rescued me plenty of times from really bad situations. But you know, I want my boys to be the defenders. I want my boys to man up. And I want mm. my girls to be okay to want a man who will take care of them, provide yeah. for them. And so that's what we're going to talk about. Um, it'll probably get sticky a couple points. And, uh, you know, I hope it, it'll it never make you feel uncomfortable, but I hope it um, reinvigorates you and helps you do what you, you know in your gut is true. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm reminded uh, a couple of years ago, at the Alliance conference, you and I had a conversation and without it being planned, we veered off into, into gender confusion stuff. Right, right. And we were talking about what do we do as parents? And I, mm -hmm. and I'll just tell you that the views and listens on that episode of the show, uh, spiked. Uh, so <laughs> just to say, it's a what, big deal. It's, it's a, a big, big deal. deal. Yeah, and, it is. but it's not, it doesn't have to be confusing. I think, you know, God has really kind of placed it in our hearts the way we should go, the way, what we should be teaching. Mm -hmm. And um, I think if we just follow that, I think our boys and our girls want us to tell them that that's a big mm -hmm. job. This is a blue job. So that's what we're going to talk about in that era, in that kind of workshop. Yeah. I see another one called The Gift, which I read is about mm -hmm. the gift that homeschooling is to parents and yes. things that we learn. Uh, another one is get real. Um, get, give me a little snapshot of that. Basically, the the goodness of us being real and vulnerable about what it's really like, right? Right. Because I think, you know, we really live in a world, and I think Christians are the worst at this. Homeschooling Christians are even, are the worst of the worst. The um, worst of the worst. <laughs> the worst of the worst. And trying to portray something that it is not. You know, we feel like we have to be a certain way, act a certain way. Like we're the poster children for homeschooling. You know, we cannot make it look bad. We cannot make yeah. it look like our kids don't like being homeschooled, or maybe we don't like homeschooling at this on this day. And yeah. I think it really, it's so, so hurtful to ourselves and to others. You know, I think when we play that, I've got it all together game, everybody loses. There are no winners. Um, because I know, you know, Social media is like, this is what it's all about. You know, you look at these posts where some mom posts and says, oh, look at these amazing things we did today. And all these other moms look at it and go, wow, our day wasn't like that. There mm -hmm. must be something wrong with me or something wrong with my kids or worse yet, something wrong with my husband because he hasn't led us in the best direction. You know, and we, and, and the truth is their families are just like yours. They struggle. Mm -hmm. They feel the same things. And I just think. Man, maybe we would we'd be able to break free from these shackles if we would just let other people know what it's really like, um, and that somebody could pray. I've known so many people. I was a pastor for a long time, you know, people who were like going through these terrible things, but they didn't want anybody to know about it. And I'm like, well, you should tell people because then they can pray for you, as opposed yeah. to just look you in the eye and go, "How are you doing today? Hey, is everything going good?" And you go, yeah, it's going good. I mean, I've taught, I can remember I was at a conference one time and I, I had this kind of this feeling that one of the conference leaders, their, their daughter was from some posts I saw, I knew some bad things were happening. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, so it was just kind of a lead up. I said, so how, how's your, how's your family doing? You know, I haven't seen you on. He goes, oh, they're doing great. You know, everything's doing great. I said, and your daughter, she's all oh, great. You're know, great. And and I came back a little while longer and I said, so, you know, so how's your daughter doing? And he just looked at me and he said, she's doing terrible, you know? And really that moment, all this stuff was un un revealed and unwrapped and we prayed and other people prayed. And I mean, it was transformational just mm. because he was real. 
And, and, and so that's what I really want for parents. You know, it's not a big deal. I'm not going to have you stand up and reveal your deepest, darkest <laughs> secrets, even though that would be a lot of fun <laughs> to, to hear them. <laughs> make me feel better, maybe, or maybe make me feel worse. But I just want you to be able to be real with your spouse, to be real with God, mm -hmm. and not worry about trying to portray something that is killing you. You know, I, I talk to moms who say, you know, everybody thinks I'm the perfect homeschooling mom, that I my kids are all in line. They're all doing amazing things. And they say to me, and I'm miserable. And I just think mm -hmm. that's so sad. So yeah. um, it'll be a lot of fun. We'll laugh. And, you know, we'll just be real. Good. That's great. And like you said, uh, the church isn't great at it either sometimes. Um, no, you, but... you could probably say all the time or most of okay. the time. We're terrible right. at it. I mean, I, I can remember being a pastor. We had two services in our church and I was an associate pastor, the senior pastor. And there was a lady who stood up in the first service and just said, hey, when we were giving prayer requests and she said, I'm, you know, I want to stop smoking. And and we on the second service, we repeated those. And so in the second service, the pastor said, and pray for Michelle. You know, she has an unspoken request and it made me mad and i'm like yeah. are we afraid to say yeah people are struggling with sin and the truth is they didn't want to tarnish somebody's image and i'm like I, I know another person who was struggling it was a teenager she was struggling with pornography and cutting herself mm. and she told her parents i want to i want i'd like to go before the church and tell them where i'm mm. struggling and the parents said Okay, but what you need to say, but what we'd like you to say is that you're just struggling trusting God. You tell me, who would you pray harder for? The teenager who goes, I'm struggling yeah. trusting God, or the girl says, I'm struggling pornography and I'm <clears throat> cutting myself. And yeah. I just think, what have we created? Mm -hmm. And I think it's time. It's just time to be real. Uh, and I'll tell you, it just feels good. When people don't think too highly of you or they just, and in fact, yeah, when people green. know you're being real, they think more highly of you, yeah. um, which is a weird thing. So that's true. Uh, and James says, confess your sins to each other, pray for each other that you may be healed. There's just such. And that's the verse that we're going to look at. That's the verse. Don't, so don't give away the farm on that one either. I already feel like you're getting me going. So I'm oh, like, sorry, pouring okay, it okay, all out. Okay. Let's move on to this. <laughs> So we don't need to go to Todd's real one because he already talked about it. <laughs> yeah, and I, it's funny because that's how it feels, but I don't ever think that's true because we talk about it for five minutes and no, you're gonna, we can dig in here for an hour. It's so, so exciting. Well, guys um, are so much easier because you can actually, they can go to the same workshop twice in a day and not know it was the same one. They're like, oh, you know, that <laughs> did sound familiar. <laughs> Welcome to Homeschool Helps with Amanda. I'm Amanda Wares, Homeschool Helps Director with NCHE. So about this time of year, every single year, people's minds turn to testing. Yes, it is testing season. Even though there's nothing in the law that requires that we homeschoolers test in the spring or at the end of the school year, it's still super common um, in the homeschool world that people do test either in the spring of the year or um, at the end of their homeschool year, if they if they're going by that kind of calendar, is still super common. Again, not required. So I will always, probably every single year, maybe more than once a year, address testing because it is one of the topics that gets asked about so often, that gets um, miscommunicated about, or there's misinformation out there about testing. So I probably will always revisit this topic again and again, um, because I just think it's important. It's something we have to do by law, and we need to be really clear. We need understanding on what's required by law, where do we get these tests, um, 
What do we do with the results? All those things. So let's get into it. Okay, first off, like I said, giving a nationally normed standardized achievement test to each student that is enrolled in your homeschool is required by our North Carolina homeschool law. You have to do this once per calendar year. So you may, or your friend or your neighbor or your somebody's cousin may have seen the private school law. They do not have to test every year. They only have to test in certain grades and assumed that that also applied to us as homeschools, but that is not true. Homeschoolers have to test every single year. Now, that's the bad news, I guess. Um, the good news is, one, those results of that test are for you. And if you choose to show them, share them with your child, your child as well. But those results are not um, to be turned in to anyone. There is no pass or fail in North Carolina. There is no certain benchmark or um, percentage percentile that your student has to reach in North Carolina. Um, really, we have to administer a test, okay? It has to be a nationally normed and standardized achievement test. And there's a long list of tests that are acceptable that fulfill the law, um, both on nche.com slash helps and look for the testing page. There's lots of information about testing as well as a long list of test providers. So you can um, get the facts and then figure out where to purchase that test or get somebody to administer the test if you're looking for that kind. Um, also, you can go to North Carolina Division of Nonpublic Education, their website. They also have information about testing and a list of tests that fulfill the law. So that is first. Second, there is nothing in the law that determines what grade level test you're going to give or um, what particular brand of test you need to give. So if you're looking to fulfill the law and jump through the hoop, I use that phrase quite a lot, and um, just give the least expensive, easiest, simplest solution for that, you probably want the California Achievement Test. There are a number of places to get that. You can have a paper option or an online option, um, but that's really the simplest. And there's everything from that, which is usually around $20, all the way to the Woodcock-Johnson, which a lot of people choose the Woodcock-Johnson um, because it is done all at one time, one sitting. It's pretty short. It's almost all orally given, so it doesn't require much, if any, paper and pencil work or um, reading, except for the reading section. Here's the thing about the Woodcock Johnson, however, is it has to be given by a certified tester. So someone... Um, has to either come to your house or you go to them to administer the Woodcock Johnson. So it's usually more expensive, um, but I know many, many, many people who choose to go that route because it is such a um, low stress, kind of just a nice testing experience. And especially if you have kids with any sort of learning disability or, um, neurodivergence, that might be a great choice for them. But again, there is no pass or fail. There is no benchmark. This is not high stakes testing like you may have left in the public school system. Um, your student is not testing to get promoted. They're not testing so that their teacher um, can show that they have done their job. Really, you're fulfilling the law, you're jumping through a hoop. So please don't be stressed about the testing requirement, but do be educated that it is a requirement within the law. Um, we do have to test every year. I know that always, always gets questioned every single year, multiple times a year. So 
I hope this helps today and I hope you have a peaceful and calm testing season in your homeschool. Well, we want to thank you guys for joining us this week. We'd love to hear from you. We want you to send your thoughts and your questions, any feedback you have to the homeschool show at nche.com. And we ask that you please help other people find the show by subscribing and rating, leaving a review on Apple Podcasts and YouTube. And if you think this show will be helpful to your friends and family, please let them know about it. Uh, to learn how to subscribe to the show as a podcast or on YouTube, you can visit nche.com slash the homeschool show. That's right. And until next week, continue to homeschool with confidence and joy.